Hi folks, John Cordisco here. Round 6 of the U.S. Chess Championship 2016. This is a hell of a game, I'll tell you. These guys are good. As White, almost World Championship challenger who got screwed out of it, actually. Fabiano Caruana. And as Black, Alexander Anshuk, former U.S. champion. Let's get to it. It's going to be a really low pay. We'll go through the opening here. Pretty much typical stuff. A4. D takes. Pawn takes. Bishop. Interesting. Interesting already. Because you're going to see that, of course, in order for White to recapture. This pawn's going to have to move. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Bishop e6. Now, oddly enough, obviously Fabiano worked this out. Oddly enough, it's a small advantage for White. I wouldn't like that open king in my undevelopment on the queen side with the bishop and the knight. But, and it looks like black's very developed. But it still works. Now, look at this move. It's also the computer's move. D3 is the other choice of the computer. Rook A5. Holy crap, pretty good, huh? Queen of D6. Just trying to hold it all together. Guard the bishop. Guard the pawn. This pawn's guarded. It's got his full development now. F4. Now the computer likes bishop to h3. Oh, by the way, you'll see interviews with the players at the end of this video. But Anishik went e4 instead. d4. Pawn takes in Passant. Queen takes. They threatened a double hit on the a6 pawn. It's almost enticing him to trade queens, but of course he really can't. He just castles. Now this is pretty crazy already. Get an idea. Instead of castles, the queen took the pawn, in case you guys were wondering. It's a big mistake. It's after bishop a5, queen takes, rook takes, you're doomed. So he castles. Queen takes, bishop takes. You certainly don't want to take with a pawn. Because now, this pawn can roll. Rook d1. Bishop g4. Now, once you stop and look at this position here. Waits up a pawn. A little behind the development, but look at the bishops. Whoops. Got a little crazy there with my arrow. Look at these bishops. This rook is here. This rook can swing over at any time. I like white here, even though the knight on b1 is sitting there doing nothing. Rook d4. Bishop f3. Bishop a4. Starting to get tricky now. We've got four bishops on the board. Rook f to e8. Just going to the open file. Bishop e3 to close that down. That does a lot of things. It guards the f2 pawn. It blocks off the file. It also guards the f4 pawn. Knight to e4. What to do, what to do. You challenge the bishop. You always go after the piece. This bishop's guarding the knight. This has to move. This knight gets lost. So he has to trade. And rook a to b8. Pretty good. Pretty good. Knight to d2. Beautiful, beautiful. Take your last undeveloped piece, 
beast been sitting there the whole game where I moved 23 and go after the really good knight on e4. Excellent. Excellent. Now, rook takes b2. I'm not so sure about that. I think he should have traded the knight then after rook takes king e8. It's about a point and a half advantage, believe it or not, for white in that case. This has all been worked out. Knight takes, rook takes. Now, I want you to stop the video. I want you to find an incredibly outstanding move for white. In fact, Anishuk said later in the interview, he didn't see this move at all. It's really, really hard to see. But, of course, Fabiano found it. So stop the video, see if you can find it. I'll give you a second. And the move is rook to e5. How beautiful is that? Bishop can't take because of the mate. Absolutely amazing. And if rook takes, pawn takes, winning the bishop, because if he moves, it's made again. So he has to take the bishop. Pawn takes, rook b8 to guard the back rank, but it's already over. Rook a5, king f8. And just a, a quiet move. Just a quiet move. C4. Threatening, of course, C5. Which make the bishop move. And now this rook gets in. This pawn will be in pre. This pawn will be in pre. And he's down the exchange. And that's where Alexander Anishuk said, that's enough. Great, great game by Fabiano Caruana. I'm really impressed. I don't think that rook to e5 move was part of his prep. But I'll bet you he was in the 20-odd move area in his preparation. Amazing preparation, these guys. That's why they're the top 10 in the world and we're not. But anyway, folks, just wanted to show you this game was really well done by Fabiano. So him losing, I shouldn't say losing the candidate's final, him not getting first, because if he didn't get first, everybody loses. And getting screwed on tie breaks. Didn't seem to affect him much. He's playing really outstanding chess. And he's now in the lead in the U.S. Championship. So there you have it, folks. A game from round six of the U.S. Chess Championship 2016. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. And I want you to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.